Hey guys, welcome to the channel and today we are going to be talking about compound interest and why it's the reason that the rich get richer and to some degree the poor get poorer. So first of all let's explain the concept of compound interest in relation to saving and building wealth. So I'm going to give you an example. Um, let's say you start with $500 of capital and you put $500 every month, you invest that uh, in stocks, in the stock market, the S&P 500. Let's say you know an interest fund or dividend paying stocks um, diversified across the market, okay? Now the S&P 500, the US stock market, normally brings in about a 7% return after we've accounted for inflation over the long term, okay? Over 20, 30 years. Obviously if it's five years, it could even be negative but in general it's around 7% over the long term. And let's say also that we're reinvesting all our dividends and we'll have an average dividend rate of maybe around 3%. So we're gonna just give a nice round number of 10% return uh, per year. If you, you know, wanna do it with slightly lower or slightly higher, you can do this calculation yourself and see what you get. Um, so we're investing $500 per month, which is $6,000 a year. So in the first year, we invest 6,000, okay? and we are at a 10% return, okay? So we get 10% back in growth and interest on that 6,000, which ends up being $600. So when we start the second year, we have 6,600, and the second year, we're gonna get 10% of 6,600, which is 660. And we're also gonna add every month as well. Now. Obviously, we're kind of working out in a very simple way because of it's more complicated than that. We're, work we're adding 500 each month, so you're not getting 10% of 500 for the whole year. But, you know, just to keep it simple, because it's only an example, we're going to say 6,000 each year and compounding annually, um, that's what you get. So to put it basically, compound interest is when you earn interest on the interest that you're earning. So after the first year, you had 6,600, and then you earn 10% on 6,600, not on 6,000. The opposite of compound interest is simple interest, and that's when you earn interest only on the principal. So in that case, uh, once the next year rolled around, you're still only earning interest on the 6,000, uh, and that 600 just sits there and doesn't earn any interest. You're only earning interest on the original principal. So we're doing this example over 30 years because that's how much time you need to guarantee that sort of average rate of return of 7% or if we add in dividends uh, around 10%. Um, over 30 years, you would amass a fortune of $1,094,385.25. You don't want to forget that 25 cents. So you would amass over a million dollars over 30 years of doing this, $500 per month at 10%. And you would only actually have saved, all right, the amount of money you'd put into this would only actually be $180,500. So you would have grown your principal by over 500%, actually 550% or so um, over that 30 years. So it's an incredible way of building wealth. And when you look at a curve of, uh, you know, an account that's using compound interest to grow, it's exponential. It doesn't just go up like this. It actually goes up like that. Okay, I'll put a I'll put a curve on the screen there for you guys uh, to check out. So we mentioned at the beginning of this video that compound interest is also one of the reasons that the poor get poorer, and it can be to a certain extent. Um, so basically, if you have uh, credit card debt, let's just use an example of credit card debt because it's high interest uh, debt. So it's a good example to use to show kind of how extreme this is. And we'll, we'll really simplify it for this one. So let's say you have $5,000 uh, in credit card debt and your APR on your credit card is 25% per year, okay? That's a reasonably high APR, but I'm guessing, you know, someone with debt, not too good with credit, maybe their credit score isn't too high, they're not gonna have a super low APR like 15 or 12% or anything. So 25% APR, um, and let's, let's just give it five years. Okay, for this example, um, because you know having credit card debt for like 30 years maybe is a bit over the top, but five years is quite realistic actually for someone to keep a balance on a credit card that they are unable to pay off. So for the purpose of this example, because I know there's gonna be some smart asses out there who are gonna say, but they'd have to pay the minimum payment at least, or their account would become delinquent and then they'd have to claim bankruptcy and all this kind of stuff. Okay, 
we're just going to say for the purposes of this example that they aren't paying their minimum payments, right? They're making no payments. It's just $5,000 sitting there. You would actually have to pay minimum payments. With $5,000, your minimum payment maybe would be like $150 a month or something like that. Um, but just for the purposes of this example, I want to keep it simple, okay? So at 25%, over five years on $5,000, being charged interest every month and then earning, you know, getting charged interest on top of that interest that's building up. After five years, you would have $15,258 worth of debt from an original amount of debt of $5,000. So that's a 200% increase uh, over a period of five years, which is pretty crazy. Uh, and when you think about it, you know, the APR officially, it's only 25% a year, right? But when you consider the compounding, and credit cards these days generally compound daily, okay, which is pretty crazy. Like as soon as interest gets added, you're earning interest on top of that. Um, when you consider the compounding, the annual rate, actually effective interest rate works out at about 40%, which is even more crazy. And now think about someone who had a high interest credit card, all right, like a 36% APR credit card. And when you consider that compounding, their interest is going to be like effectively like over 50% or something over a period of several years, you know, per annum. Um, so that's crazy too. So compound interest, it can work for you when you're saving money and it can work against you when you are in debt and you are accruing interest every month and starting to pay interest on that interest. So it really is the reason why the rich get richer and sadly why some poor people get poorer. They fall into a trap and it compounds and grows and expands and it just traps them and they're unable to get out of it. So what should you do? Take advantage of compound interest to grow your wealth and try as hard as you can not to get into debt. That's my advice. All right, guys, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe for more videos every week. Leave a comment with your thoughts, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.